Okay, aloha everybody. Aloha, 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 and welcome to today's lecture. The lecture topic is a song that I wrote that is called Kapilina. What's going to happen is we're going to go over the pronunciation of the words. We're going to go over the poetry. I'm going to give you the literal translation of each verse. I'll play my ukulele and sing it for you. Then we're going over the kauna. The kauna is the secret meaning that composers write into their songs. I will share some of that with you. At the end of the lecture, we will all get up together and dance kapilina to a recording by Mr. Sean Nauauau. Now, to share with you how this all began. Mo'o'olelo, Mo'o'olelo is a tradition of telling stories. It is very similar to another word, Mo'oku'au'chau, which is genealogy. In the genealogy, you have the generations that will take it from me to the 30 generations behind me. In the tradition of Mo'o'olelo, which is Pilina, very close to the tradition of Hula, there is also a genealogy of not only the story, but the storyteller. And in the Hula tradition, if you're going to dance a song, you should know the Mo'o'olelo of that particular song. If you don't know the mo'o'olelo, then what you're doing is just kuhi akalima, gesturing with your hands, hehi akavavai, stepping with your feet, kanawe ana okekino, and the movements of your body. So that just tells me you know a dance. But when you take the time to study the mo'o'olelo, the stories, the many stories. There is not going to be just one story. There's going to be several stories connected with a melody. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, mm, we need those mo'o'olelo. We need to understand the mo'o'kuauhau. Ayanoya oi kapauku ivaina. I hear kapo'o, I hear kahi'u. You have the middle section. I know ya oi kapauku i I hear kapo'o, I hear kahi'u. You have the middle section of the fish. Pretend there is a fish, and there are three parts to the fish. There is the head, the middle section, and the tail. And that is a pilina. It is also a pono, all right? It is an order, it is a protocol. Ayunoya oi kapauku ivaina means you have the middle section. Ayer kapo'o, where's the head of the fish? Ayer kahi'u, where's the tail of the fish? Now, if you can imagine a fish swimming in water, yeah? The head is what sees everything and the fish moves in that direction. It's about movement, yeah? It's about hula, it's about genealogy. So the head then is symbolic of our past. Our past has brought us to where we are today. The middle section, kapauku ivaina of the fish, that is the present. I have kahi'u, the tail of the fish, is the future. And the fish is pushing the middle section and the past forward. Now, in the Olelo Hawaii'i, or the Hawaiian language, the word for front is also the word for past. Vamamua. Vamamua because we believe we follow the past. Hence, the protocol or the order of the pono. So you have the akua, 
You have the Aumakua, you have the Kupuna, you have the Makua, the Opio, and then the Keiki. Again, that is a Pilina, a connection. Akua, Aumakua, Kupuna, Makua, Opio, Keiki. And again, we come back to the song, Kapilina. It's referencing all of these things. Ayanoya oi kapauku ivaina, so you have the middle section. That's like saying, okay, I have the motions of the dance. Okay, good. I have kapo'o. Where did that dance come from? Who wrote that song? What's the kauna? What's the story of that poem? What is that poetry saying? And then you have the tail that is pushing it forward. So can you all check because someone's mute button is not on and I could hear conversation. Please put your, yes, there we go. Okay, so bearing that in mind, if you only have the middle section of the fish and you have no history behind it, driving the fish forward, how can the tail, yeah, help it to move forward? Because if you're missing the head, which is the direction, and you only have the middle section, which is the present. In order for us to move into the present, which is going to be in the hula context, the understanding of the mele. Yeah. We need all three components. Each one, pili ke kahi ke kahi. Pilina, he pilina ke kahi ke kahi. They are connected to one another. They are a connection to one another. And here we go again, back to the word pilina and how important a word it is in the Ololo Hawaii and in the Ha Hawaii, in the language and the culture, the breath. And why do I say that? Because we are the Mo'opuna of Ha Loa. So knowing your genealogy, we are the descendants of Ha Loa because Ho'ohoku Kalani gave birth to Ha Loa Ke Kalo, the first Ha Loa who expired soon after his birth, was planted into the Aina, and then from his body grew the Kalo. So he would provide sustenance for all the descendants of Ho'ohoku Kalani and Papa and Vakia through the second Hanau, the second birth, and that was Haloa Nakalau Kapalili. That child, like his elder brother, was named Haloa. Haloa Nakalau Kapalili, he became Kamakua Kalahui, he became the father of the entire nation. So we all connect to this genealogy, u connect Pilina to that genealogy. Kapilina, there is a Pilina there. So the nation of Hawaii are all descendants of Haloa. Haloa, great words from the word Haloa, from our ancestors. You get Hanau. You get ha pai. You get ha. You get Hawaii. All connecting us to our ancestor, ha loa nakalau kapalili, and his older brother, ha loa ke kalo. Wow. Again, pilina connectedness, mo'okuauhau genealogy. Um, Mo'o'olelo, history and storytelling, and it gives us a place, an order, a protocol, and a connection. Combine all of that and you get the word again, pilina. So when you hear, Oka pilina, kaua, Oka pilina, kaua. It is not just about this relationship of love between Kawakahialii and Laiei Kavai. That is just the story that is being used to tell and educate people about this great word Kapilina, the connectedness in our lives in our mo'okuauhau, our genealogies, in our mo'o'olelo, our stories. And in the hula tradition, yeah, all of that matters. It's all vai-vai-nui of great importance, this pilina. Oke kumu oka hula, 
o ke kumu o ka hula, ka ho o mauana o ka imi o ka ike o ka hula. O ya vale, ho o lohe hau. O ke kumu o ka hula, ka imi mau o ka ike o ka hula. What does that mean? The true teacher, the true foundation of the hula comes from the continual research and study of the knowledge of the hula. That's amazing. Again, pilina. It is a pilina. Listen again. Oke kumu oka hula. The source, the foundation, the teacher of the hula. Ka imi mau. The continual searching oka ike of the knowledge oka hula. So as a hula teacher for basically all my life, I understood these pilina and I understood my role and responsibility. Continually research. What does continual research provide? It provides continual learning. Yeah. What does continual learning provide? It provides continual perpetuation of the tradition and the art. And that is apilina remarkably all connected to the tradition of pilina so when you hear the song uh, think about all the things so now what he does is he sends a messenger up into the mountains to find the high chiefest laiehikavai his mission is to ask her if she will come down and visit him <clears throat> well, this this attendant of the chief Kawakahiali has a great mission. The journey is way up to Paliuli, and I guarantee you that journey was beset with a lot of challenges. First of all, there is a giant mo'o that guards her home that is Kanuilulamoku. And then there are all these epa, these mystical beings that are also guardians. But her home is surrounded by beautiful maile and the fragrance of the maile. Her home is thatched with beautiful yellow feathers. And of course, she has attendants that are there with her. And many of them are these beautiful, brightly colored birds. Magically, he's able to get the message to her. And she replies that perhaps, perhaps she will come and perhaps she will visit the chief Kawakahiali. Well, then she tells him, if you hear the o io io of the elepayo bird late in the evening, that is a signal that I will be getting myself ready for the journey from the mountain to come down to the seashore. When you hear the singing of the Apapane bird, and its voice will be soft and beautiful, that is a signal that I've started my journey. Then the song goes to the chorus, Okapilina, Akaua, and the purpose of the journey is so that Kawakahi Ali and Laie Kawai can Pilina come together. Now how many of you know the song? Can I see a raise of hands? How many of you dance the song? Raise your hands. Okay, good. I want you to get up. We're just going to do the first verse on my ukulele. Just the first verse, okay? And then I want to continue the lecture about the second verse. Okay. Me conareo, 
first verse. Now let's get to the second verse. All right. Well, the servant comes back from his meeting with Laie Kavai and shares with Kawakahiali her words. She will come, perhaps. She will visit the king from Kauai. He is to listen to the singing of the Elepayo bird. That will be the first ho'ailona, the first omen that she is getting herself ready. She's getting herself ready for the journey. She will leave her mountain home. She will come down. When he hears the singing of the Apapane bird, soft and gentle, she would have left her home. She would have left her mountain home and she's beginning her journey down to visit with him. Then he tells the king, and when you hear the sweet, sweet voice of the Iivi Polena, and that Iivi Polena bird will sing at dawn, then the high chiefess the mystical, the magical, the beautiful high, high chief is La Iekavai, will be outside his abode. So, the king is very, very excited. And he's listening to all these beautiful sounds. And here again, another pilina, another pono, in order, a protocol, a very ancient protocol. Ho'ailona, the call of the first bird, the elepayo. The second ho'ailona, the call of the second bird, that is the apane. Now, when I wrote the story, because there are many birds in this legend that are ho'ailona to the arrival of the high chiefess Laie Kavai to visit Kawakahiali. But I tell you, if I wrote about every bird, we would have maybe a song of 100 verses. And I'm sure if you dance 100 verses, you'd be pretty tired. You'd have to remember it all. And then the musicians would have to sing 100 verses. So I had to take the most important part of the story. Yet, keeping the major part, which is the pilina, the many connections reflected in the story. And there are so many, many, there's so much more that can be shared about the melee. Okay, so now we go back to the story. So the king listens through all the night. He hears all the different ho'ailona, the bird songs. Then finally at dawn, he hears the i'ivi polena, and he knows that that is going to be the Ho'ailona where she is there. 
So he rushes outside. Everywhere is covered in this mist, this very heavy, heavy mist. And then the mist rises. And there in front of him is the legend, the magical, the mystical, the beautiful High Chief Islai And she is there reclining on this palaquin. And she has been born down from the mountain on the backs and the wings of all these beautiful, brightly colored birds who serve as her companion and also her attendants up at Paliuli. And if you can imagine the king seeing this, first of all, not only is she as elegant and distinguished as legend has made her, but she is being carried by this multitude of beautiful birds. Yeah, that caused a great deal of awe. The Pilina, that connection. And, of course, they shared very little at that moment. Their uniting was spiritual in the sense of the word aloha. Aloha being connected from generations to generations to generations. Aloha being connected with the breath of our ancestors. This ha. And after that brief moment that they shared in this spiritual connection, this mystical connection, the mist settled back down again. And the high chiefess La'iye Kavai was transported back to her mountain home. And then we get this union. You know how people talk about their, um, their spiritual mate? What's the word for that that they use? My soulmate. 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 So, you know, they were soulmates. And, and what a beautiful thing. So in this union, they didn't have to become physical mates. So it takes a story to a whole different level that incorporates Akua and Aumakua and Kupuna. It brings it to a unique level where it's about omens and portents and prophecies. Um, it is such a, a beautiful story and a beautiful moment. And I wanted to capture that as I wanted to share with you all yeah, this lesson about Pilina. You know, when we do something good, the outcome will be good. When we do something bad, be cautious because the outcome may be bad. And everything comes full circle, puni. And again, it is to teach about the importance of the mo'okuauhau. It is to teach about the importance of the mo'o'olelo. It is to teach that hula is not just motions, steps, and body movements, but hula is very, very spiritual. There is an order to everything. There is a reason, there is a purpose. And we say, A'akahula vaiho kahila hila makahale. I would like to say, A'akahula vaiho kamoloa makahale. You want to learn the hula, leave your embarrassment and leave your laziness at home. You want to be a good student of the hula, be prepared to study. Oke kumu o kahula, ka imi mau o ka ike o kahula. Because the true source of the hula, the true knowledge, the true reason, the true teacher is always going to be the desire. 
to continually research and learn about the Fula. Let's go to the second verse. Where it says, Lohe ia ike au. So this is when he heard at dawn. At dawn he heard um, the song of the Iivi Polena. And I use that word au because au is light. And light is enlightenment. And if you want that enlightenment, you have to work for it. It's not going to fall in your lap and magically you know all of this. It takes years and years and years of ho'omaka'u preparedness. Ho'oma'ama'a, yeah. learning. Makahala no ka'ike, makahala mau no ka'ike. The more you do it, the more you learn. This is what our kupuna said. So it says, Lohe ia ike ao, himeleko ka iivi polena. At dawn he heard the voice, the singing of the iivi polena. And there she was, ea e kavahine, halli halli ia mai ena manu. She was being brought forth by the manu, by the many beautiful, brightly colored birds. And that was that pilina, that spiritual connection of soulmates. So let's try and let's try and do the second verse. And then at the completion, we will all get up, yeah, and we'll all dance it together. But now this is your rehearsal. <laughs> let's try the second verse. Lohea, Lohea, Ike Emele koka iivi polena eya e kavahine hali hali iya mai ena manu o kapilina. about their meeting, their coming together. And the one thing about this mele that I composed yeah, in the poetry are very unique words that reflect unique traditions for the culture of Hawaii and for the people that take hula. And uh, in the olelo, we say, Ika olelo Hawaii, Ayano Ika olelo Keola, Ayano Ika olelo Kamake. There in the language, there is death, and there in the language, there is life. And that is an ancient proverb reflecting the power, Kamana, o ka olelo, of the language. And we, as poets, people that weave words into song, have to be very, very careful about the words that we choose to put into those songs. And so to give you a few examples, 
you already heard me mention the word ao. Lohe ia, ikeao. It was heard at dawn. So if you can imagine at dawn, the sun comes up and sends its rays up into the sky. Because of that, the ao is symbolic, very symbolic of enlightenment. Where there is light, there is knowledge. So in the Ulelo Hawaii, we say na'au au and na'au po. Na'au au in intestines filled with light. Na'au po in intestine or intestines that are filled with darkness. The au and in, 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 in traditional Hawaiian culture, all healing work, yeah, ho'ola, always needed to be done in the ao, in the light. Healing work and healing traditions were never done in the po. And the tradition of ho'ola and hula are very, very close because we share the same hula deities to the people that do ho'ola or healing. We also share many of the same plants in hula, they're used for lays. In ho'ola, they're used for medicine. But if you can imagine the sun coming up, the reflection of the first light in the morning, then the sun and the rising of the sun is symbolic of life. The emergence of life from the darkness. Yeah, mai kapo, mai ke ao which is from the kumulipo. My kapo, my keao, from the darkness, the light was born or the light emerged. So using these symbolic words in poetry are so very, very important. Um, then, in the first word, I talk about o io io. And everybody went and looked it up and it talks about to chirp as a bird, o e o e o. You can find the words online, o e o e o. But again, being a poet that was trained by people like Auntie Emma De Fries, who was well known during her time as being a kahuna ho'ola, a healing god, kahuna. She worked with me on my poetry, how to write the poetry, what elements do you use in the poetry. So I had real good kupuna guidance. Uh, another guide was her sister, Auntie Josephine Kiliikipi. I had so many teachers that sat down with me and to discuss poetry, one-on-one, -on -one, alo ike alo with these teachers, like Auntie Edith Kanakaole, Auntie Genoa Keave, um, Auntie May Lobinstein and others. I sat down with them and we discussed all of this because I wanted to be a hakumele, make a pono with pono. What would that mean? That would mean I would go to these elders, sit with them, listen to their mo'o olelo and never forget the source of those mo'o olelo. Now that's a tradition like a mo'o kuauhau, to talk to the kupuna, to learn from the kupuna, and that's where the ike comes from. The ike comes from our kupuna. Now that I'm a kupuna kuakahi myself, great grandpa, I want to share that tradition, how to do it. So just that you know, I'll be start teaching at Winwood Community College <laughs> uh, the semester, September of 2020. Going back to what I was talking about, the word io, o io io, and the intent of o io io, the chirping of the bird, was io, io the hawk. Now, io the hawk is a symbol, and the io the hawk is a symbol of the one supreme being, our kupuna called io. Io, the one supreme being, a very ancient, ancient belief. Before the time of the gods Ku, Kane, Lono, and Kanaloa, our people had this belief in the one supreme god they called Io. The symbol of that god, Io, was, of course, the hawk. But also in O Io Io, 
is EO and EO is truth. EO is truth. So what you get in the first utterance of the song, O E O E O. Wow. The first word calls out not only the sound, but the supreme God, Eo. Eo, the hawk. The symbol of that belief and that tradition. And then you get Eo, truth. Truth. And this is how Kavai Kapuokalani writes music. This is how I write poetry. This is my inspiration. So the last thing I'm going to say to you is this. Helavaia oi no ke kai pa pa u. Helavaia oko no ke kai ho honu. Will you be fishermen in shallow waters? Or will you choose to be fishermen of the deep seas? I thank you all for attending this lecture. It has been a pleasure to be able to share with you Ike wisdom, our enlightenment, that which comes from our kupuna. And I'm going to ask you to all stand and get in your places, and we're all going to end together. Wow, you can say you all dance with uh, Tutuman Kavai Kapo Okalani Hewitt. All right, so we'll get in our places, and then you, you'll start the music. Thank you.